All right, champ. Grixis Planeswalker. So we got a red, black, mid range core with a splash for our Nickel Bolas boys off of uh, some lounges and some shocks and slow lands here. So one of the things that really stood out to me last time we played this that was sweet is our K commands here pick creatures up from our graveyard and we have six planeswalkers here that are technically creatures when they're in our graveyard. So being able to K command pick back up either of these is sweet. Another kind of sweet curve that we have in this deck is if you play Chandra on four, her plus two mana on turn five lets us ramp cleanly into Tibalt the Cosmic Imposter right away. So really nice four or five curve here at the top end. We've got just good interaction at the bottom and some other Nikki B's to draw some cards. So let's pop on into some matches with this and see if Grixis Walkers can be lightning that strikes twice an explorer for us. This felt kind of reasonable last time we played it. Hopefully it can feel reasonable again. We need to cut lands for hand grads. Hard pass. Going on, Rebellion. Thanks for three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Tycon, thanks for the 33. Changes you'd make to this deck for Pioneer. I have no idea. I haven't played actual factual Pioneer. Don't really have good insight in how that format differs from uh, this current one that I am playing. Go ahead and meat hook this bone crusher, I think. Getting kinda punished for sequencing here, because I have to discard a card if I want to kill this trespasser. Trespasser flip. You want my seventh lands here so I could like Nico Bolas plus hold up Heartless Act? Kali Tusk good. Is there a graveyard deck in Pioneer that doesn't exist in this format that's good against our decks already got kind of a lot of top end. Like what what problem is Kali Tusk solving that's worth playing more fours? I don't think that card's better than any of the fours that we're playing at the moment. Ah, 
insolent fool. Yeah, and there hasn't been, is there a lot I can't have in an actual fight here? Because that, that uh, art tape hasn't been super popular in this format I so far. I bring my own. My schemes are never ending. When people start screaming, I know I'm on track. Treasure, Treasure Cruise is a pretty good match at the opening card. This deck can't play Dig, so we don't have double. We don't make double blue super consistently. A single, single blue for Treasure Cruise seems fine. Care if the exile thing for my bin. Do you have to have another bone crusher giant to kill Nikki B here? That almost hurt. Yeah, these red black decks are super grindy for sure. Cool. Now I get to fire up this hive and KO their Soren. Actually, a little bit behind at the moment. Because their den of the bugbear means they're going to be able to pressure my Nickel Bolas off the table. Really, really hoping to draw a Tibalt or a four mana Nikki B for our side here. The top five archetype in Pioneer. I would challenge the idea that we know decisively what decks are top decks in Pioneer simply by the virtue of there aren't really tournaments for that format, right? Of a time, Planeswalker. abilities for this one. I thought he is ready to draw more lands and die. Ooh, piece of candy. Well, to be fair, Tim, all of our Bolas activations, they sacrificed miscellaneous extra artifacts too, right? So it's not, it's not like our Bolas activations were two for ones. If that, if that makes sense. Feeling pretty good now.
Well, that's an unfortunate draw for us. All right, the good news is our K commands are live draws now, so that's nice. Holding on to Heartless Act for now, I'm gonna go ahead and trade. I'm gonna trade a Hive for this, I have two of them. Ask, ask, and you shall receive, chat. I'm glad, I'm glad we're getting to see in the first game why this deck was sweet last time we played it. Welcome to the grind, baby. That feels good. Look at that! We plus two to our tip alt chat and we drew four spells. Are you ready, chat? Bone crushers ready! Spells in their deck are really good. Yeah, they're not they're not bad, Chip. Alright. We're gonna board we're gonna board in more grind after that game, believe it or not. Let's get some invoke despairs and some extra planeswalkers in here at the top end. That's all I wanna do. Want some angers as some cleanup. Let me treat like a word kill in a heartless act and board some of these in. These trade one for one with graveyard trespasser, which is nice. Kind of into it. Playing against the opponent's deck a lot recently. Last I checked, the opponent's archetype was the most popular deck in Best of Three Explorer by a wide margin. Let me let me log into my Untapped and see if that's still the case. Yeah, according according to Untapped, the opponent's archetype is like twenty percent of the format, and it also has one of the highest win rates. Has a almost 60% win rate while also being the most popular deck. Oh, I'd like to draw lands for the next three turns, please. Untap lands. Nailed it. Step on this now. Yeah, 
I think the uh, the opponent's archetype is like a pretty reasonable best deck to have in the format, honestly. It, uh, it attacks and blocks at its core while also just having some good quality two for ones in it. Dear Deco, I'd like to draw lands for my next three or four cards, please. Thank you. Which of my two for ones would you like to take, opponent? Some of them are actually three for ones. <sighs> Untapped land for the Ravager next turn would be gasoline. You know what? Tippity tap land. That's better than brickin. We take those. So we say you discard shock this and then if we brick on the land we get to Bolas take the last card out of their hand next turn. And then they get to Croxa us but if we draw an untapped land we get to answer with either of these. Untap plan, please. Nail it. Easy. Easy game. Nikki Nikki B asserts dominance as the uh, the ideal grindy deck chip. You want wants to come grind with my plus one draw two planeswalker? Chat. That game was a good example of why I board out my discard spells in that matchup. You wanna, you wanna play to the board. Is it really a Grixis deck if it's winning? <laughs> I, I knew they had Crocside. I didn't bring in my Go Blanks on purpose. Welcome to the lounge, friends. Show me the cat's meow. Oh. Oh, they're not they're not doing oven things. It's kind of damage to play on the top card library. You may play a lamp every layer of cats for the hell. You don't put that card in your hand. It's a neat card. I'm taking the chariot here. All right, deck, you know the drill. I would like lands for the next uh, two to three draws here. Is that a blood braid elf at home? It is. In fact. Like to rampant growth by Nickel Bolas. I would love a swamp. Rats. 
Rats! Gosh, it even it even comes into play. Untapped chat? Listen, this in Field of Rune is why we have two basics in our deck, by the way. I think it's I think it's important that you always play at least two basics in this format. My children drench their hands in the blood of my enemies. I'm sure you'll miss it. I will get what I want. I will get what I want. They blitzed this? Deal. Weakness, I cannot exploit. Nico, Nico Bolas confirmed capitalist. Watching Jeff for years, and I still haven't crafted Nickel Bolasses. Wow, your willpower is like off the charts. All right, so Meatook Massacre is lethal next turn. Attack for four, and hook them. Come on, draw your Wellspring. You know you want to. You know you want to. You work for me now, runt. By coin or carnage, tribute is owed. If I'd have kept the land instead of the Heartless Act, we'd have killed him here. Yelling timber do 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 be do 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 be do 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 Okay. I've conquered the entire plane. <laughs> One. 
one city will be. Oh, I have a job for you. So if I kill this, I then discard this, and then they don't gain any life? And then I'm still at one if they plus the other one, right? So I think I think we're good. Your punishment is my entertainment. By coin or carnage. Close game. Close game. One is one is not none shit. They are confirmed to be different numbers. Don't end the game at one life. You didn't use all of your resources optimally. That's true. It's just them's just the facts. Ting. We bought 20 life. We're going to use 20 life. Exactly. Sure, this is a land, so we could get into play tapped. Families call me their adversary. You work for me now, Runt. I think I'm supposed to just trade Chandra for this. Because if I Bolas and they kill Bolas and hit me, it's pretty bad. I think we just guaranteed take their card advantage off the board here. Whatever. Figure it out on your own. Now, we're leading on Ravager over this because I care about this one dying less than this one. I want this one to try and survive. So I'm going to like use their Jun Charm or whatever to kill this. So this is more likely to survive. I'm okay with them using Bone Crusher Giant to finish the Kabolas here. Yeah, a push could have been a possibility there too. And trophy, trophy's not even that bad here because it ramps me up into my bulky, right?
Well, I guess if they draw untapped land, they could blitz this to kill Tibalt. So maybe this is loose. Yeah, Clothis would have been real bad for us and is probably similarly bad for them. So, oh, God bless. Eduk Massacre, about to live up to its name, Chip. It's garbage time. You don't have to go home, but you can't play here. Oh no, chat! They emptied the last two cards out of my hand. How will we ever win the game now? Make no mistake. I'm not. Oh, today's my lucky day. I have to figure something else out, Chip. We will slay our enemies. Slay our enemies. Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. Yeah, there's there's just so much candy, Chip. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh yeah. I can't even hold all these magic cards. Defy me, and you'll lose everything. I feel like they're already losing everything, Chip. Because I'm an unnecessary, unnecessary voice line. Everything is gone. Attacked him for four, chat. I didn't real I didn't realize we were gonna we were gonna enable devotion. Oh no! I've gone completely blank. They do in fact still have the wellspring. <laughs> Your punishment by coin or card. All, all of the planeswalkers are belong to our game board chip. Uh, so it's going on multiple zeros. Are you familiar with the addition of Explorer to Magic Arena? If it's been a second since you've been around, we have a pioneer adjacent format what we are currently playing. A lot of old favorites from Historic that have since been pushed out of that format by Unholy Heat, Archmage's Charm, and others seem to be very reasonable here, which is fun. It is. It was an excellent choice, Imbot. A true shillionaire of the people. 
The cop the common person shillionaire, if you would. Oh vomit! Me play against control deck? Oh no, good. Okay. I was worried my uh I was worried these weren't gonna have texture for a second. Let's go ahead and heartless act this right away before they can put counters on it. So Hey, Grimaldin. Oh, we're Kaido as a Parahelion enabler. Got it. Now, what do we have here? What do we have here? What's going on, Cordemi? Thanks for hanging out for almost four years. Welcome back. Magic is a skill-based game, do da do da. Magic is a skill-based game, oh the do da day. Do 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 Got huge tracks of land. This is getting fun. I guess I could have drawn. I guess I could have drawn a, uh, a what's it called there? Could have drawn a meat hook. Maybe we're supposed to take a draw step. Go blank is good enough here. They do prepare Helion in the bin in advance a lot of the time. Bone Crush doesn't really kill most of their stuff. Minox probably kind of mediocre here, huh? Just spot removing their individual threats ASAP. My window to didn't get our second land thought seized on turn one, so that's good. Step one accomplished. Oof. Oof, I hope nobody at home is too attached to the cards in our hands yet. There are, our spells are about to go the way of the dodo bird. What's going on, Noor? It's the 28th. Good morning, good morning. Ledger Shredder. Otherwise, otherwise they get to go Shredder into Thoughtseize Connive next turn, which is not great for us. 
And this way, if they want to play their threat out, they have to, uh, it could just a heartless act so we can pay the ward. Don't currently have second black to take both our Chandras, so. Let's see if they draw it, I guess. scared of a second Grease Fang and like sit on this K command. That being said, I need to get a threat into play so we can actually start winning the game while we hold up Disruption. So I think it's correct to just tap out for Chandra here and accept we might die. I think they want to try and save their discard spells for the turn they can attempt to Grease Fang. Ah, uh, it's just a victim. It's like what they're doing. Was holding up Kikimi and do you. it shatters Parahelion, so you don't get attacked that turn, and then we can untap and kill the Grease Fang with Chandra. Really glad they banned Winota chat. This Grease, this Grease Fang deck is so much better than the Winota deck was. It's kind of unreal. The, 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 the combo deck getting to play Thought Season Duress makes it so much more difficult to interact with because they get to just play discard spells. Aaron silly that they banned the worst combo. Yeah, and it's self-enabling for three mana. You can't just kill their other creatures. And their deck doesn't have a deck building restriction like Winota does. Like Winota, you have to play this mix of creatures and non-creatures. With Grease Fang, you just need to play eight cards and have a way to discard one of them. There's so many, so many ways to meet that. Yeah, and also it also combo kills from an empty board quite frequently. Definitely an accurate assessment. on their face and then play a 4-3 here.
Wrangled my bone daddy chat. This is why you should always have a safe word. Even bone daddies need safe words. Why does she end up in the graveyard? So their hive of the eye tyrant is a real problem here. If I Chandra and KO their their two two, the hive can kill my Chandra. If I go up, the hive can still kill my Chandra. I think, I think it might just be a land pass situation. I think I'm just heartless acting the 2-2 here. Nah, I think jamming Chandra is pretty wrong. She's basically our last resource here. I take no joy in the suit, but it's net blood for knowledge, a fair trade. My safe word is being brought back by Culligan's command. <laughs> what on, by sound? Thank you for the 51 months. Welcome back. It's been a while. There's a chance that this is a spell. I'm gonna chill, I'm gonna chill on this for now. Bring my own army. Oh, now you're asking for it. That's an interesting line, Martian. I hadn't thought about. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps that was correct. Plus for me and then cycle the lounge. I can see that. Yep, you're going down. I'm yelling timber. Do 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 So pretty far behind at the moment. Clean. We clean out these tokens, but then they still have a Soren and a Hive and two cards to our just K command here. Really, really need to find one of our our heavy hitters here. Our, our Nikki B's, or ideally a Tibalt after we draw seventh land, because Chandra's going down here. They did here. not prioritize exiling our creatures. It's very good for us. Okay. You will serve me well. All right. Halfway there, living on a prayer. Let this be over. Ooh, you're right. That is why they neglected to exile the creature. They wanted to uh, be able to grab it with the graveyard trespasser for life. That makes sense. Able to thoroughly punish that sequence, though. Oh. Six cards in their bin currently. In, we have a problem. So we're gonna end up at 13 here. They're gonna have a 6-6 six, six and a 2-3 in play. Ouch. Taking eight here, and then we're chump blocking Croxa.
Hey, well, thanks for dropping in for a live one, Pixel. I appreciate you dropping off the Prime. Yeah, yeah, we're dead here. Another good example of why Thoughtseize is not particularly great here, and we just want all of our cards that play to the board. Actually, do I want all the spot removal? Probably not. Looks Sure, that's the land in my opener. So this is definitely a seven mana spell. Getting, getting a little information to match up like this is not worth it. lined up so we'd like to draw a four or five drop next turn and then a land the two turns after that so we can go chandra into Volky. or chandra into timol technically i suppose Technically counts as a five drop, right? Step on you, play the bone daddy out. Do you think bone daddy stepping on Chandra is wizards, a wizard sanctioned lore interaction? Choose between Tibalt and the Awakened Inferno. Yeah, Giza, Giza feels like uh, Kalidus at home energy, although she doesn't have lifelink, which is a big part of what makes Kalidus' kit good. Is ready to get mind rotted. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Ooh, Crax is good. Uh, I'm gonna gamble. I'm a Magic the Gathering player, Chad. I like gambling. Scurred chat. Yep, you're going down. 
How do we feel about these Chargers? I feel pretty bad about this board, this one that has borders around the edge. We're casting hours because it's borderless, right? Yeah. It's actually correct to cast ours too, right? Because when theirs dies, it goes to their graveyard. So all things considered, I'd rather have a dead Chandra go to my graveyard to not fill theirs up sooner. Because they have stuff like Croxa to escape. So borders, borders aside, it is strategically optimal to play our own. And then cards in here are are safer than cards in my actual hand, so we'll play the Lulf out. This also this Lulf also gives us the ability to pressure their Torture Defiance next turn, which is nice. Cannot be denied. But Fatal Push here. They they are getting dangerously close to Chandra's Unite move here, which is pretty scary. See one more removal spell. Oh, today's my lucky day. Oh, I get a loyalty off Croxa if I play a Loth if I play her first. Yeah, that's a good call. And she wouldn't she wouldn't have died here. Although them them making that attack is weird, right? Because now they can't block my menace spider. Make no mistake. I'm not You will be a pile of ashes. You wanna go to oh, this is gonna hurt. I guess I guess if they leave them back as blockers, I could just take one of them, but if you like forcing me to down tick, it probably has value. Clean living right there. Stop, drop, and roll won't help you, buddy. Won't help you, buddy. Ain't your buddy, pal. This will be easy. Oh, so it's like play the next Chandra and let her go up. I don't know that we're fully in garbage type Lucos. I I am at four. Our opponent, our opponent could definitely still win this. We're 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 certainly favored, but this game is not over by any means. So if I do X is five, six, seven, I then can't fire up Den of the Bugbear. I can't cycle this because it's an exile. You can only cycle from your hand. They, they, yeah, they need like running Bone Crusher Giants at this point. Oh, 
The longer the game goes on, the longer we draw three cards per turn, and that's much better than winning. Hello. Just a purr. Thank you for the tier two, and thanks for the 32 months. Welcome back. Sounds good, Imbot. It's a little sweeper heavy, but their deck's also full of discard spells. They don't really want to mulligan against that, so. We have three lands on the draw. I think we mostly keep anything with that. They play another creature out that dies to anger. I assume we're losing Nikki B. I guess I could theoretically take the anger, but. If they don't take the anger, I'm just gonna one for one the anger with the harvester next turn. Just keep my life total high. Taking my taking my thing that's not like the others here makes a lot of sense. Really surprised they didn't use the blood token on their turn to try and hit their third land drop. Seems like a like a mistake. Oh, heard that coming to play effect before. Cute. It's my turn. This will be easy. They have only two cards in their bin currently. It's still pretty far off of escaping crux, so. Yeah, they really do not like our graveyard chip. I'm gonna shock this in, so if I hit a five mana spell with Chandra, I wanna be able to cast it. Yep, you're going down. Your move, Yugi boy. This is all. This is all I got. Yes, I guess I'll take this two mana six six if you if you're gonna twist my arm. So the, the problem with the card like Hearse against the cat deck is that when you tap it to go to exile the cat, they can just like sack another food and they don't really mind having to sacrifice another food because the cards like trail of crumbs. So like you make some of their sequencing a touch awkward in spots, but ultimately it really doesn't do a lot.
That seems great for us, right? All right that's it. That's it. Your finest nickel bolasses, please, deck. I also accept lol. Wolf is also an acceptable wolf. You could have such power, but you are too weak. Subservience will be a reward. I love our giant pile of planeswalkers, chat. On board card advantage is a beautiful thing. It definitely feels like we're slipping ever closer into garbage time. Hey, look, Chad, it's a discard spell while I'm ahead on board. As you, as you will, opponent. As you will. Okay, kill you on the backswing. Good chat. Good chat, opponent. A pity our time is over. They won the moral victory by killing Loth. I mean, to be fair, even if they don't die that turn, the game's still pretty overrate. Have we lost yet? Yeah, we died to Grease Fang. We've beaten all the other grindy mid-range decks, and we lost the combo deck. Uh, Phyrexian Arena is on Arena, but it's not a Pioneer legal card. Tenacious UD. I'm actually just going to go ahead and stomp this now, so that way they don't have an opportunity to use it to Amexilis us next turn. Uh, I think we're card for card the same thing we ended on last time. Hey, look, Chad, it's another red-black matchup. Whoa, they took my Heartless Act and not my Thoughtseize? gonna keep the pressure on they miss their third land here again we close the game out real fast at least we at least we know we're sideboarding in this matchup You know, I think I'm actually going to trim a meat hook. I think two anger, two meat hooks probably be good. I think I want to keep the third heartless act. This is cheeky chat. Our opponent put us on the play. Sure. Deal.
fire. This will be easy. It's my turn. Oh, today's my lucky day. Plusing Nikki B here. I think having two must answer planeswalkers ticking up seems ideal, especially with their creature land. I want the Bone Crusher Giant to be able to stomp their dead of the bugbear. Hey, thanks for up in the prime. Mr. Wilson, welcome back. So I get to emblem my Chandra? Is that is that what you're saying? Okay, thanks. Good good chat. Well, that was a disaster. What's that smell? Oh, it's you burning. Now you done. Guess you don't need me anymore. Oh, you know what? I should have. I should have plus my nickel bolas before I did that. I could have discarded this land. Sad. Let mistakes mistakes were made, Jen. I don't think they're gonna matter, but we should acknowledge that mistakes were made. I mean, the logic is that of putting me on the play is that. You think this is a matchup where card advantage matters more than tempo? And I don't I don't think that's the case. I think the the person in chat that said this matchup is about getting on board and making your opponent react to you, that's that's accurate. Very very much care about being getting ahead and staying ahead on board rather than having slightly more cards. Your cards, your cards don't matter if you're behind on board, which also goes back to why discard spells are awful in matchups like this, because the the matchup is about playing to the board. Good find, in a team. We played some, we played a, a middling Jun deck in standard that was like, had some interesting games, but overall felt a little bit weak. And now we're revisiting some Bolas and friends here in Explorer. These are a few of my favorite things. Please be mono red. The viewer, I think I'm taking the week off from doing viewer lobbies. 
for Unite last week. Last week was a little rough for viewer lobbies. And we also just didn't have that many people interested in playing. So I think, I think doing it every week is probably a little bit too frequent. I think this deck is competitive. Probably not. I also think you could win matches with it. I think, it, I think it's good. I think it's good against the... Um, this deck is definitely good against the red black mid range deck. I don't I don't know if it's good against the other things people are doing in this format, but you, you definitely outgrind the black red mid range deck not close. I mean chat, there's a lot of factors as to why we didn't have a lot of people for Unite last time, but that's fine. I'd rather grind rank up my main anyways, I think. Always the schedule's always not gonna allow some people to do it. This is how it how it be. You did a removal spell ASAP here. Even then, that might not be enough. You'd hit like running, running removals. All right, the fact that they didn't grow this to a 3 4 means that, or a 3 5 means that Chandra is live here. Yeah, I've got I've got a trio lined up today, and uh, Wednesday we're going to be five stacking with the stream team. So obviously they intend to play another spell and connive here, but wait, what? Oh, they have fatal push? Are we just fatal pushing my bolas? I, I think I'm pretty okay with this exchange. Seems, this seems fine for me. Nice. Okay. Well, just like that, we're ahead. You wanna play with fire, huh? And next turn, Chandra's mana casts Tybalt. Yep. They have not been to Parahelion yet. They're through two Grease Fangs. Great, third Grease Fang is the charm. <laughs> uh... and this is again like just to iterate why Winota is super okay in this deck uh, probably shouldn't be, honestly. Maybe it's also fine, but like Winota never fucking kills you from an empty board with four mana. If you're interacting with the Winota deck, you actually have a very good shot to be competitive. And not only do these decks get to play discard spells and tons of card selection to find their four of, they also just get to kill you from an empty board. I don't know, that's, that's something we talked about last time we played this deck. Maybe there should just be a bunch of Lantern of Insights in my sideboard. This matchup's definitely, like, this is a matchup that definitely feels bad when you lose to it, so maybe she should just overload on interaction for it and call it a day. the case yeah well we'll do that after this match we'll put we'll put three or four lanterns in the sideboard And I have Ray of Enfeeblements, but clearly, clearly those are not enough. The nice thing about Lantern is you it sits it sits on the table, so that way they can't thought seize it on you. Yeah, yeah, the fact that it can draw a card leaves it a lot of upside for sure. Ben, thanks for the 27 months. Welcome back.
Think it's safe to craft the Grease Fang deck? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Which, honestly, I would wager that's probably the reason, one of the other reasons, too, why we haven't seen more of the Grease Fang deck, is I, I assume most people... I assume most people think the same, that it's just not a safe craft. We could just be dead? Yeah, maybe, but like, I have to play a threat, chat. Like, you, you have to just tap out in spots like this and like, hope that it's good enough. They don't, I know, I know it sticks with you in your head and it feels bad when they get you in a spot like that, but it's correct to just tap out every time. You gotta, you gotta just go for it. The same reason Splinter Twin got banned in Modern Jet. People... Well, little, little babies got their feelings hurt because it felt bad when they tapped out and they lost. That's why, that's why Winota got banned in Explorer. And again, just to state my position clearly, I think this deck should be legal and it should be fine. It is just beyond mind-boggling baffling to me that this deck is allowed to be legal when Winota was removed because this deck is more resilient to hate and consistent than Winota could ever be. So it's, not, it's not that I think this deck is too good and should be removed, it's that I, I'm confident it's better than Winota, so it's weird that we removed the worst deck from the format. They have a counter spell here. Probably high. I don't want them to counter spell. Oh, that's tapped. LOL. <laughs> I definitely expected this to be untapped. Um, I don't want them to like counter spell me and then untap and grease fang me. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass here and hold up Ray slash K command slash cycle. And then next turn, I can play Chandra while still holding up Ray as a You know, I'm not even sure if that was true by the end of Splinter Twin's lifespan. I think the I think the way the Green Tron decks had been built towards the end of Splinter Twin's time being legal, they actually had a pretty reasonable matchup into Twin. I don't know that I'd call it good, but you had a lot of counterplay and back and forth. One of, my, one of my social media interactions that will never not, like, be seared into my brain was I had, I had some magic zoomer arguing in my mentions that Splinter Twin deserved its ban in Modern. And when I brought up the card Spellskite, they were confused and told me they didn't know that card existed. And I was just like, oh, so you've never actually played with Splinter Twin. You're just very confident it shouldn't be legal because you don't, you aren't familiar with literally the most easily accessible hate card for it. <laughs> literally, that literally everyone could play if they needed a sideboard card for it. Yeah, that was my understanding, right? Yeah, you had a hard, hard post-board games. All right, they have another spell pierce yet. They do not. God bless. We still, we still got to try and not die to this ledger shredder. That was the problem. Step, step one was not die to the grease fang. Step two is try not to die to this. Go ahead. 
Thank you for the 25 months. I think I'm actually going to shock this in. And then plus this because uh, if we draw a two mana removal spell, I want to cast it here. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yo, me all secrets. Oh, this is awkward because now this could get to a five next turn if they cast two spells. Yep, yep. Okay. We played Grease Fang in Explore. Yeah, you're just blind. It's one of the first decks we played Braveheart. It's like the second or third deck. Click, click into the playlist and scroll to the bottom. Uh, I don't know that we played it a lot. We played it at least once, maybe twice. Oh, they didn't connive a spell here. That's great for us. Means Chandra gets to live for a turn. There's multiple Parahelions in here too, right? Yeah, there's three. There's three boats in there, Ben Chan, is the problem here. Yep, you're going down. I'm yelling timber. Do, 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 do. Casting this. Four looks at a Grease Fang here if they want it. Wait, they left a card on top. We'll move it, move it. Thanks for the almost two years. Welcome back. Yep. <sighs> Not the Raven people man I wanted for Christmas yet. We're dead, right? Yep. Good story. Good shit. All right, we're going to put a bunch of lanterns at our sideboard. Yeah, with the addition of the connived Dorko, there's definitely been more Esper than Mardu. a ray because that's ultimately an answer for grease fang and then probably these go blanks i kind of wanted the go blanks for control but I, I could reasonably board in the soul guide lanterns of the control matchup too just to can trip them you want to take out the runestones i think i want both like 
Chat, if I take out the rune stones, we haven't been drawing the rune stones. I just need more hosers in the sideboard. Like, replacing the two hate cards I already have with three weaker hate cards isn't going to help me draw my hate cards more frequently. I want to. I want to go up to five pieces of graveyard hate so we can find it more consistently. Yeah, and again, for the record, like, I don't expect to, like, draw a lantern and have the Grease Fang deck die. Because the Grease Fang deck can Thought Seize Lantern before it happens. You have ways to destroy it. You can just use your Connive card on board to attack people. Like, the Grease Fang deck is very, very good, chat. It's super resilient to disruption. Like, we had a bunch of removal spells that game, right? And they just ground through it, because that's just, like, how their deck works frequently. They just grind through your disruption. I'm not boarding in Duress in the Grease Fang matchup. Duress, Duress is for control decks. Um, huh. I think it's Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. Are we just plan to pressure Sword off the table. They can use a blood token to fatal push my bolas here, but then Lolf gets to come down and kind of open us up that way, and Lolf can apply pressure to their sword in here as well. So I feel like we're in a pretty good spot. Like like I said, this the red black matchup for this deck seems consistently great. Excuse me? Sure. As you as you will. Yeah, I mean trading Bone Crusher Giant instead of Fatal Push seems like a great exchange for us, so deal. And then actually, I think because they have Fatal Push for a Spider Token this turn, I'm gonna Chandra plus for mana, play Bone Crusher. You wanna go to <laughs> Today's my lucky day. Oh yeah, they could have also just traded the Harvester, right, directly? Because they have two Blood Tokens? Yeah, they must have missed that too. We have the sideboarding in this matchup down to a science. He says, looks at his cards, realizes maybe he doesn't. Two cuts here. I think I was cutting these, right? Leaving the Heartless Axe in. Yes, that was the play. Just again, for those that are newer to Magic and mid-range matchups like this, you'll always see me cut my discard spells in these matchups because um, these matchups are about playing to the board. You want your cards to impact the board because getting behind on board is how you lose the game. Look at that. Blue land on, on one like a professional. If Amazon Prime is subscribed to Jeff to real money like some sort of sucker, just make sure you use your Amazon Prime somewhere. And an, an unused Amazon Prime sub chat is like giving Jeff Bezos free extra money. Lord, Lord knows he has enough of that. Take, take some of Jeff Bezos' money and donate it to someone here on Twitch. Take our take your take our little win where we can get them in our late stage capitalist escape. Yeah, yeah, real decks have curves, and right, we got a real solid curve here for sure. Learn is missing their land drop again. You love to see it. Big angry bolas. Do, 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 do.
Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> well, I was going to discard a card to let Dragon God kill this graveyard glutton, but now, now I'll we'll just do this shit. Well, I'm a Thunderdome opponent. Please enjoy your stay. So, so I've talked about this before, but what we're gonna be doing in Explorer on this channel is we're gonna eventually go through all of the old historic decks on my website that are no longer playable in historic because of Unholy Heat. And then uh, we will get them updated for this new format. It's a little bit lower power level. Danny Bolas is a good man, shit. He pluses, he pluses to generate a two for one. What's not to love? I have a oh no, not my nickel Bolas. How will I ever replace him? Oh, no. It's plenty more where that came from opponent. Witness a motor. But decided to keep the green screen permanently. Uh, I actually have, uh, so the May finals broadcast is this weekend for Pokemon Unite on Saturday. And we're, they're going, we're going to attempt to use the physical backdrops for that one is my understanding. So the green, the green screen will be coming down later this week. For the, uh, Pokemon Unite themed backdrop to go up. I just imported this and I realized I already have it all in for So no joke, son of some. When we loaded this up earlier, I realized Meat Hook Massacre was the only foil I was missing. So I finally just bought Meat Hook Massacre. <laughs> I was like, well, I, I, guess, I guess we'll finally foil the Meat Hook. Might as, might as well, I suppose. God, this deck just dismantles this red black mid range deck chat. Just actually shoves them into a trash can. Nice creature land. We were, we were done when this card plus for the first time. <laughs> Bye, friend. Bye, friend. Smith, thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate you re-up and welcome back. That number is low three digits. Are we feeling okay? They keep feeding us red black matchups, chat. Chat, we've been playing crappy Grixis decks on this channel since uh, Four Mana Bolas was released, okay? We've been trying a long time. This, this will be the last magic deck of the day. We're going to swap over to Pokemon Unite at about one o'clock. Is my plan. I'm doing two slightly longer sessions with magic decks each day is my plan. So assuming assuming both decks are reasonable, each deck will get played for about two hours. I'm doing a little bit shorter live schedule this week, about four hours of magic each day and about two and a half, three hours a unite. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it a little bit easy with the live stuff for the short term because when Marvel Snap releases, I plan to go hard for that game. Looks it looks real good. I think there's a chance to uh, expand content in that general direction. Snap Marvel Snap. 
is a recently announced uh, Marvel digital card game that's going to be going into closed beta on Android and will eventually be available on Android, iOS, and PC. Yeah, there's early. there's been an early gameplay stream. The gameplay looks very reasonable. The monetization system the game intends to use looks pretty pl player-friendly and not predatory. So, looks like there's a lot to like. Ben Ben Brood's new company is is the design is the designer creator of it, so they've got a lot of very talented people with good TCG background working on it. Oh, and they sent me stuff in the mail. It was funny. So, I got I got an email. Yeah, Second Dinner is the company. I got an email like two months back from a promoter that was like, uh, from a promoter that was like, uh, we, we have an upcoming digital card game for a major IP. Do you want a swag box when it, when it releases? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And then like this box came and I was like, oh wait, yeah, that was a thing. Usually, usually people like oversell their own stuff though. So it's like, I wasn't expecting it to actually be a major IP. Turns out it was, uh, it was pretty big. Renzo, thanks for the 14 months. Welcome back. Uh, they have not sent me any dollars to play their game. They, they did send me a small box of stuff though. Yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix Rising was, I, after, we talked about this the other day, but I cannot believe that Ubisoft is a major game studio because both the Ubisoft games I've played that came out in the last five years are just absolute trash game systems. Well, both Phoenix Rising and Assassin's Creed Valhalla have some of the worst third player combat puzzle stuff I've touched in those style of games. Yep, you're going down. Ubisoft is having financial problems. I'm not surprised after the quality of their games they played. I plan to do Cyberpunk at some point. I just didn't want to start another variety game uh, because the Marvel Snap is supposed to be going into beta at some point in the next two weeks or so, and I don't want to start a game and then have to pause it because I want to work, I want to play that. Oh, punish for not playing Heartless Act here. Okay, we found that, nice. Unlike FedEx, this game didn't deliver. <laughs> That's brutal. But a drop of power. They're gonna get to uh, unite Chandra next turn if I don't draw a Bone Crusher or a K Command or another Bolas. Swing and a miss. Nice, sick. Okay, this actually solves both my problems. My schemes are never so I can shock bolt this in. Chat, can Nikki B drag us kicking and screaming across the finish line? They chose to keep the card in their hand, so I assume it answers my dragon gun. I brought some money. Oh, look what I found. Nice. 
Now, the nice thing about keeping them off of lands here means if they draw their Agents of Treachery, they're not going to be able to hard cast them. That being said, they can Indomitable Creativity if they draw this turn. I prefer friends in low places. Of my power. Do we flip Nick? I don't think so, because I want him to pressure Liliana. We don't we don't flip him yet. Oh that's true. They could be Locust God combo, because they did they did try to X his two last turn. So I think the play here, we're gonna lose Dragon God either way. So I think the play here is make sure they can't creativity us this turn. And we go ahead and let them get to their draw step, and then we K command shock the Kiki, make them discard a card. Oh, I guess they're gonna get to. They're gonna get to cling to dust here, right? All right, and I don't want them to have choices, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this now. Woohoo! Oh, Papi! Papi! What a hit! Nailed it. Have been foiled. Death is ever present. What a waste of my time. Well, so I can't. I can't bring anything back here, chap, because they have they have cling to dust. So I do I do need to just plus this here. Yeah, they have they have uh, fifteen cards in their graveyard right now. The hive the hive will clear out the cling next turn. How many uh, creativities are they through, by the way? Hey. Looks like they're through three creativities at the moment. Do you know who I am? Oh, they can cling in a response to being targeted by Hive. Yeah, that's true. Gated to Mythic with the Enigmatic Incarnation Deck and Explorer. You love to hear it. All right, are we in garbage time now? I guess they could draw a token maker plus a creativity. Planeswalkers are fun, chat. These are a few of my favorite things. Six cards in their bin so they can... Oh, that's their seventh land. Are they about to... Uh... Are they about to hard cast agent? They don't have a basic to get. Alright, and they're out of creativity. Is
Uh, they have five basics in their deck, so Liliana milled a few of them. This will force the cling out of them. Okay, so what do we think of Indomitable creativity our two creatures to try and hit another Ravager to take the last card out of their hand? It's definitely the content play. Look at that. Look at that, chat. Things you love to see. It. Things you... Look at me, chat. I am the creativity deck. Our brain is huge. Huge brain. Oh, that's true. Stealing tip alt is actually pretty mediocre because they don't have the emblem. That's funny. I, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that's super true, huh? Now, to get out in front of the question Chad always likes to ask. Weathered Runestone is bad in this matchup for two reasons. The first is that Indomitable Creativity puts the card into play from exile, not from play, not from the library. And second is that even if creativity put it into play from the library, they would just pay one more for X and destroy your runestone because it's an artifact. So this card does not come in here. It is not good. Do not board it in. I already clicked in one card from the sideboard, yeah. All right, we want our spot removal in this matchup so we can kill their tokens and stuff. Minoka's like okay there, but I think Anger's actually a little bit better. I want a little bit more efficient way to uh, to clear their things out. What do we want to get rid of? Is Ray good because it's easier to hold up? I, they um, they have a lot of things. They have like a lot of tutus and stuff too. Is the problem? Maybe I don't want all the Doom Blades. Maybe it's like not the power word kill. We have four, eight, nine, kind of 12. That's probably plenty. I need any ways to actually kill them too still. Oh, is that too many cards out? That is too many cards out. Because the power word kill can stay. Yeah, I don't think I want any of these. I don't want too much top end. We might have to tap out for a bomb on occasion to get ahead, but generally speaking, I think this is a matchup where we actually Volky on two because the information that seeing their hand provides is a lot of value. So it's not, not likely to hit anything. As we see here, we full brick. We kinda kinda get to know what we're dealing with for a little bit. Also, we also get to start attacking them. Getting Grixis lands PTSD. Well, to be fair, our Grixis lands are much better than they were previously because we have a Grixis Triome. I think I'm waiting to Thought Seize here until after the second chapter of this. So that way they have more of a chance to hit cards I want to take away. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm explicitly waiting on the Thought Seize. 
Oh. Oh, with the uh, with these actually, they could have if they hit creativity, they could have agented us this turn, right? Maybe they were worried about a fatal push or something. Thanks everybody for hanging out today, by the way. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen, or you haven't seen this fantastic Grixis deck before, that means you're not someone that's subscribed to my YouTube channel. Every single day, we play at least two different Magic the Gathering decks. We're doing at least one Explorer deck per day, but also been dipping into some standard, historic, and alchemy on occasion as well. And everything that I stream gets archived to my YouTube channel. If you pull up the front page of that there, you'll be able to see um, playlists of all the different formats that we play. So it's very easy to find just the content we care about. Pleasure doing business with you. I trade Valky for this two one, or for this one one. It's gonna happen at some point. Might as well be now. Nixilus plus this chip. My entertain. Go ahead. Plead for mercy. Take us out now. Stabilize a little bit here. Next time, I'll cut you down. Defy me, and you'll lose everything. Going on, Tron. Thanks for the three and a half years. Welcome back. Yeah. You and I are gonna take him out. Oh, Chandra this? probably puts. His, I, I guess if we draw a land here. We get to clean out the removal spell, he says, before drawing a tap land. Another finger on the monkey paw curls. Sometimes your three lander doesn't go anywhere. Secrets. I just take the creativity. Any fingers does the monkey paw have? Too many. Too, too many. Definitely a play my 4 3 out matchup. Let's get attacking. As many as it takes. Oof. Like one nickel bolas grants. I've always had a green screen. I was just too lazy to put it. I just didn't want to put it up, and then I needed it for the Pokemon Unite broadcast, so I just haven't taken it down.
So in theory, they get to play Liliana next turn. But if they do that, I can Heartless Act the Zombie, Untap, Hive, plus Bone Crusher, kill their Planeswalker. Oh, they have the Dwarven Mine for an extra blocker. That's unfortunate. That's floating fell. It's fine. I say if there's another Unite broadcast this weekend, shit. So I didn't want to like take it down and then need to put it back up again either. Now the opponent's deck is an agent of fun deck, chat. Agent of fun stealing. This play is not great if they draw a second creativity, but again, I also just need to be like pressuring them. I just want to like keep their board clear and keep attacking. Say what, say what you will about Grease Fang. This deck is actually the one I hate playing against the most in the format. Agent of Treachery is just such a toxic magic card. It's so fucking miserable to play against. It's actually the worst experience this format generates. Not close. To interact with agent once it happens you're just like all right yeah i'm getting three for one <laughs> at a minimum oh gosh and with liliana death's majesty i can't even with liliana's death majesty i can't even kill the agent because then they'll get to bring it back wow this card is really gross in their archetype it's a token enabler for creativity and, and it's insulation, just vomit. Yeah, we're just super dead here. I don't play some Pokemon Unite. Playing, it's close, it's close to Pokemon Unite time anyways. And I'm gonna be honest, playing against Agent of Treachery just like removes all of my desire to continue playing Magic. So I'm not gonna squeeze one more in. I agree. I agree with the assessment in chat. The, the agent deck is a little bit worse than the Grease Fang deck on average, but it's definitely way less fun to play against. All right, wrap up thoughts on this. Uh, the fair matchups feel great. The unfair matchups feel varying amounts of bad. So I think you definitely want a bunch of Soul Guide Lanterns in here because just like having a sideboard cards is our best way to try and beat the, uh, the Grease Fang deck. I don't think you can make this deck good against the Agent of Treachery decks. You just like, we're a deck that plays to the board and needs to tap out on occasion to play to the board. And you just, you're not aggressive enough along with our disruption to get under the Agent of Treachery deck. They eventually just like draw and cast their threats. Like we were pretty fortunate that our opponent stumbled in the first game of that last set for to give us time to be able to go long and take over the game. I think that's definitely the exception not the rule and there aren't really a sideboard cards you could play to make a matchup like that better yeah yeah the the red black mid-range deck is super popular right now and this deck is very good into that we're basically just like a bigger red black mid-range deck that like has a blue splash to like jam these really powerful um pieces of card advantage all right let's unite unite some pokemon some huh?